What is going on everybody? It has been a while since I posted any power saver and performance guides for the Steam Deck. And because of numerous requests and the fact that I've been wanting to get this one out for quite some time, I finally present to you the Steam Deck Power Saver and Performance Guide Volume 4. And once again, all of these games are running with Wi-Fi disabled and the allow tearing option enabled. And putting the brightness to medium or low will give you an extra 10 to 20 minutes of game time with any of these titles. And personally, I'm testing all the games with medium brightness for indoor and outdoor practicality. And the Steam Deck has been getting a lot of updates lately. They're mostly just tweaks to Proton and specific games for better compatibility. And for this list, I tested these games about a month ago. So battery life could in fact be better if you personally test these custom settings that I'll be sharing in this list. So the first game was highly recommended and it made quite a splash when it was released. And that game is Hi-Fi Rush. I managed to get two hours and 30 minutes with this title. I set the TDP to six and the resolution at 1024 by 768p with borderless full screen mode. And the FPS was set to 60 Hertz with mostly medium settings. And yeah, surprisingly with all of these settings, I was only able to get a little more than two hours and 30 minutes of play time. And the reason why I set the TDP to six with that specific resolution is because hitting 40 hertz for a game like Hi-Fi Rush is very important. This is a rhythm based game. So your timing is everything. At 30 FPS, the game doesn't quite play as good as it does with 40, especially if you're trying to time certain beats throughout the game. So 40 hertz is very important with this title. And now the next title I made a big deal about in previous lists, and that is Spider-Man Miles Morales. I somehow managed to get two hours and 40 minutes with this title because it is a lot more graphically intensive than Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. I naturally set the TDP to 7, and just like with Hi-Fi Rush, I set the resolution to 1024 by 768p, and the resolution scaling was set to FSR 2.1, with the FPS set to 30, and most of the settings were set to medium, because the game still looks amazing, even with medium settings and at 768p. In order to get 2 hours and 40 minutes with this juggernaut of a title, which I would assume is impossible on most other handheld PCs, with the Steam Deck, you'll be able to get 2 hours and 40 minutes with this resolution. So yes, if all you care about is battery life, the Steam Deck will deliver with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Of course, the FSR 2.1 is so advanced, and with that resolution, you won't be able to see any of those digital lines around each character and the background, because FSR 2.1 is just that good. Now, the next title is one of my favorites, and something I always actively try to play and test on the Steam Deck. I would say this title doesn't work 10 out of 10 perfect on the Steam Deck just yet, but for what you want to do, which is versus mode, and if you want to do it on the go, Ultra Street Fighter 4 lasts about 4 hours and 30 minutes with TDP set to 4, the resolution at 720p because you got to see what you're doing. And it's not exactly a one player game, even if you're playing by yourself, there are multiple characters on the screen at all times. And I found that setting the FPS to 45 hertz gave me the best results in terms of gameplay. And the settings were all default, I didn't change anything. That's why it's set to 720p. But yeah, even with those settings, I was able to get four hours and 30 minutes with Ultra Street Fighter 4, which is incredible. So if you're on the go and you want to play for almost five hours with your friends with a classic fighting game like Ultra Street Fighter 4, the Steam Deck will give you four hours and 30 minutes and then some, depending on what you put your brightness to. And the next game on the list is one that a lot of people are interested in and were asking to be ported to the PC for so many years. And it's the main headliner in this specific volume, and that is Persona 5 Royal. I somehow managed to get five hours to five hours and 20 minutes, depending on what kind of location you are in the game, because the game has dungeons and it's open world and there's a lot of combat. So if you're in an area that has a lot of combat and it happens to be a dungeon location, then most likely your battery life will be five hours and 20 minutes. But if you're mostly wandering around and going about the open world, then you'll get about five hours. And somehow I managed to set the TDP to three with a resolution at 1024 by 576p and the game managed to still look amazing because it is cell shaded and it's kind of anime style so the outlines sort of don't need to be extra refined for higher resolution so the game still looked amazing and just pretty much good enough i set the fps to 30 and the settings were set to high with the shadow specifically being set to medium and yes that is in 30 fps mode but if you want to bring the game up to higher fps at 40 hertz mode you need to set the tdp to 4 and you would get a good chunk of battery taken away with this 
this option. The battery will most likely last you about four hours and 10 minutes. And with 60 FPS mode, you have to set the TDP slightly higher to be a little more steady. So I set the TDP to five and pretty much with the best FPS and the best resolution, which is 720p, which is how I tested this last segment, the game still lasts a good amount of time. At 720p, 60 FPS, you get around three hours and 30 minutes. So yes, Persona 5 is very playable on the Steam Deck. In fact, it is verified and I give it two thumbs up. I think it is an appropriately verified game for the Steam Deck from what I played. I play about 10 hours and I tested for about six and it manages to give you a good amount of battery with the lower resolution and lower FPS, but it is a turn-based game. So reaction time isn't exactly something you need in Persona 5 Royal. There is stealth in the game, but stealth is pretty slow altogether. 30 FPS won't affect that as much as you think. Now, the next game on the list is definitely one of my favorites in the Devil May Cry series, and that is Devil May Cry 5. I managed to get this game to last four hours and five minutes at 30 FPS mode and three hours and 55 minutes at 40 Hertz mode. And for the 30 FPS mode, I set the TDP to four and the resolution for both was 720p. And surprisingly, with 40 hertz and high settings, setting the TDP to 4 won't change much in terms of performance. This is a very well-optimized game, just as well-optimized as the Steam Deck is, so this game and the Steam Deck work gloriously hand-in-hand, -hand, and you will get plenty of battery life. And if you're very good at Devil May Cry 5, you'll most likely get through half of the game in one session. And seeing how 30 FPS and 40 hertz only has about 10 minutes in battery life difference, I think most people are going to want to go into 40 hertz mode at high settings because all that matters is the TDP in this instance. Now the next amazing game I tested was actually a series of games in one collection and that is the Halo Master Chief Collection. The first title I tested in this collection was Halo Reach. Now I won't be testing all the games just about three but Halo Reach lasted about four hours and ten minutes at 45 hertz mode and three hours and 40 minutes at 60 hertz mode which is what most people are probably going to play at and I set the TDP at 40 hertz mode to four. I set the the TDP at 60 hertz mode to 5 and the resolution for both modes was 720p with original settings. I did not touch any of the settings. The only thing I sometimes change is the audio track from remastered to original because sometimes I like hearing the original gunfire and ambient soundtrack. Now the next game I tested in the collection was Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition. And even though this is Anniversary Edition, all of these settings and battery length were tested with the original Halo 1 graphics. And that game lasted 4 hours and 45 minutes at 45 hertz mode and 4 hours and 10 minutes at 60 hertz mode. See, I set these games to 45 hertz because I honestly sometimes have a difficult time telling the difference between 45 hertz and 60 hertz. So for both 45 hertz and 60 hertz, you only need to set the TDP to 4 with Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition. And the resolution is set to 720p at the original settings. So now moving on to the next game, which is kind of a different game, but not really. It is still Halo 1 Combat Evolved Anniversary, but with the anniversary graphics enabled. So I think this is important because next time I'm probably going to test Halo 2 Anniversary if I haven't tested it already. But with the Steam Deck with Halo Master Chief Collection, Obviously the graphics matter, so setting it to the anniversary graphics will put quite a dent in the Steam Deck's battery life with this specific title. So Halo 1 with the remastered graphics enabled lasted about 3 hours and 10 minutes with 45 hertz mode. With 60 hertz mode, the game went down to 2 hours and 45 minutes, which is still very good in terms of average battery life with the Steam Deck. And for 45 hertz mode, I had to set the TDP to 6 with the remastered graphics enabled. Again, with 60 hertz mode, I set the TDP all the way up to 8. And with both modes, the resolution was at 720p with original settings. And all of these instances were tested for absolute steady FPS in most situations like semi-free roam, linear locations, driving and flying. With all those situations considered and tested, 6 and 8 watts were the most optimal. Because you could put the TDP to 6 watts with with 60 FPS, but it's just not going to be steady in those bigger locations. But yeah, considering everything, again, while testing this, make sure your brightness is at medium at least and your Wi-Fi is disabled if you're not playing a game online. Later on down the line, I'm probably going to test Halo with multiplayer, so the Wi-Fi is going to be enabled for that instance. But if you're playing online, most likely you don't want to rely on a battery. So while I'm playing online, I use a power bank. And the specific power bank I use is branded Auhi, I guess that's 
that's how you pronounce it. And it's a 100 watt, 30,000 milliamp hour power bank that lasts me about seven hours in some cases. So even if you want to rely on battery, I think that bringing a power bank for those online games is the best case scenario. But yeah, the Steam Deck is capable of so much, including saving a lot of battery on a considerable amount of performance, including 60 hertz. And like with the last few games I tested, 60 hertz for the Halo titles work just fine at 6 TDP. But sometimes with 60 hertz, setting the TDP to 6 or 5 makes most games unstable. I think setting it to 8 to 10 while playing 60 FPS will save you a chunk of battery life and performance. But yeah, that has been the Steam Deck Power Saver and Performance Guide Volume 4, and I'll try my best to deliver the next volume as soon as I can, just as soon as I test a lot more games with those newer Steam Deck updates that have been coming out for the past few months. I've just been focusing on other handhelds as of late because I'm just a fan of technology, so when something new comes out, it's not that I like the previous one less, it's just how much better newer devices can look and perform that make me realize that the previous iterations or devices had shortcomings that I never realized before. And it just really opens my eyes a lot of the times. But yeah, I can't wait for newer versions of Steam Deck and seeing how they're going to improve battery life, resolution, and performance. I really hope that they do in fact improve performance because Valve said that they're going to focus on battery life and the overall quality of the Steam Deck screen. But I really hope that we get some more teraflops in there. I know that doesn't matter as much, but I just hope that we get a lot more power. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this power saver and performance guide. And let me know what kind of games you want to see tested and to see what kind of settings I use for those as well. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a good one. Later.